Campaign 2016 was defined to a large extent by emails, servers, and WikiLeaks. Now that the U.S. intelligence community says Russian President Vladimir Putin was part of a scheme to undermine Hillary Clinton's campaign with these illegally obtained documents, the New York Times is expressing regret about how the media handled the situation. The Clinton campaign calls this a crime reminiscent of Watergate, but worse. The steady stream of hacked emails from top campaign advisors put Hillary Clinton on defense and Donald Trump on offense. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. At the height of the campaign, Republicans charged the press wasn't doing enough with these documents. Go to the front page of the Washington Post or the New York Times right now. I couldn't find a single story about any of this. That's called suppression of the news. Which wasn't true. Regardless, now that the CIA puts Putin's fingerprints on the leaks designed to help Trump, the New York Times says it regrets publishing those stories, writing... Every major publication, including The Times, published multiple stories citing the DNC and Podesta emails posted by WikiLeaks, becoming a de facto instrument of Russian intelligence. WikiLeaks is amazing. And a lot of the press thought so, too. Well, at the time, as you recall, we discussed this. And once you have data or information at your disposal and you can verify that it's authentic... The Clinton campaign never said it was false. They didn't say those are not our emails. You're going to report it essentially regardless of where it came from. That's Whoever. right. So, I mean, I appreciate what the New York Times is saying. They became a de facto arm of the Russian intelligence. But, you know, if, if it had been a different source, would they have felt better about it? Yeah, and, and I mean, I don't think that the New York Times is quite saying we wish we hadn't reported on the emails. Uh, I think that what they might agree with is what we were saying before the campaign, which is report on the ones that are truly newsworthy. There were some juicy emails about mm -hmm. the Clinton Foundation that should have been reported on. Don't report on the pure gossip. There was a lot of that. And there should have been more emphasis on the fact that these were stolen emails probably coming from the Russians. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that we discussed here about whether or not down the road you get bitten in the behind for using stolen documents. And, we're, and I, I remember I was sort of Six of one, half dozen of the other. Okay, well, to your point, mm. it's out there. Well, do you not try to vet to say that, you know, what's in it is authentic? So in this case, uh, you know, they're being the arm. They weren't going to know they were the arm of anybody until it was way down the road. So I don't, I don't know what it, their expression of regret now is except to say, here's what happened and here's how we became a part of it. That's important because we want more transparency with how stories get to the front page. But beyond that, I'm not sure after you've decided that you're going to use it and you know that it's stolen, you know, you can get bit. That's, right. that's how it goes. Th you know, mm -hmm. what, what this points out, and I know some organizations did do this, but you, you have to, when you're dealing with delicate information, you have to build it into a broader context and bring your audience along or your readers along to say, this is what we know, this is what we think it is. We're trying to dig to find out whether or not, you know, this is where it came from. As long as you're painting sort of the broad picture of where this information is coming from. I think, you, you know, you have to report on it. You can't, even mm -hmm. if it's just kind of the gossipy kind of things, it's out there already, yeah. right? Contextualize. So, right. You just, mm -hmm. if, as long as you are being honest and transparent and saying, you know what, it could be that we are being used uh, as we report this information. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the same time, it's not as if oh, well, we're being used and we might be helping this candidate beat this one, so maybe we should pull back. I mean, I don't know that that's not, our not role. Not their concern. Right? Exactly. That, that shouldn't be our, our I concern. I think a couple of things. If the New York Times hadn't published it, it wouldn't have mattered. I, everybody else would have published right. it. And this is no longer a world where the New York Times and the Washington Post and a handful of papers control access to information. So if they hadn't published it, the public would have had it anyway. Exactly. And they're inflating their own importance by saying <laughs> they became a de facto yeah. arm of, yeah. the, of the Russians. Also, if they hadn't published it, people would have accused them of being a de facto arm of the Clinton campaign, yeah, right. of not publishing information that was unfavorable to her, all of which was true and accurate, none of which were forgeries. They were obtained illegally, but they were the truth. There was, there was a forgery in there. We can get into that some other time. Oh, really? And also there was, uh, you know, there was some gossip that never should have been reported on, like the fact that John Podesta thought Larry Lessig was annoying. I mean, come on, that does not 
rise well, the to the stuff that line. they said about well, Catholics, she is, I think, I think, was I think that was interesting. <laughs> Well, sometimes, you know, sometimes a gossipy thing, though, it gives yeah, you a sense on. of what people are like. And I, I, I don't have a problem with the gossip stuff. I just want to say that, you know, it, it wouldn't in the scheme of things matter that the New York Times, but it does because it's the New York Times. Yeah. And there is a mob in, uh, kind of pattern that happens for many, many other outlets yeah. because they Sadly. publish yeah. it. Yeah. So that's what they are less reflecting less, on. Less though. Now well, right. I don't know. Yeah. They're reflecting yeah. on that and they understand that people are following <laughs> them. Sometimes people don't even follow them. They just repeat what they said. Right. Period. All right. You know.